All right, and Adobe finally came out with some new updates for Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Lightroom. And today we're gonna take a look at Adobe Camera Raw 16. So this is gonna be our new update for the next calendar year, which is 2024. And we have some pretty cool updates here that we're gonna go ahead and take a look at. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice, and I've actually imported a couple images over here so we can just do it all in one screen and keep it simple. So the first thing that you're gonna notice, if you come over here now and you click on light, we've just got this little bunch. It used to be a basic bunch where it was a whole bunch of different stuff. And then the color is kind of down here in this new panel. Now I've got this set up so only one panel opens at, a same, at the same time. You can if you hold either on a Mac, the command key or PC, probably the control key, and you click on this, it will allow you to open both panels at the same time. But what I wanna do, because I've been using it forever, I want color back above on top of light. So what can we do to fix that? So what you can do is I'm gonna hold the control button on a Mac and I'm gonna come over and click on one of these. And what this is gonna give me the option to do is a couple of things. I can get out of that single panel mode that we see right here, or in my case, I wanna, and the first thing I'm gonna do is you can see it says right up here, tap the arrows to change the order. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that and move that color above light. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now I've got color up here like it used to be in this below there. But I want them both open, so I'm gonna hold my Command key on a Mac and boom, back to how it used to be. So that works better for me. Obviously, if you want it a different way, feel free to change it, but things have changed over here in the menu a teeny tiny bit. And the next thing that we have is HDR. So we have this image right up here and notice how this histogram is. It's just your traditional histogram. But when I click HDR, that histogram changes. So we have the standard view, which we just saw, and the HDR view. And you'll notice right here, it's kind of creeping over into HDR. Now, this is only going to work if you have a monitor that is capable of viewing HDR. If you just have a regular monitor, this is gonna help you. There's really no sense in doing this because you won't see any difference. I have a 5K monitor, however, I do these videos in half that resolution because these panels would be so small, they're almost impossible to work with and you wouldn't be able to see them. So we do have a little bit of data that extends into the HDR that we see over here. So if we come down here, we'll notice we have HDR limit, and this is what it's talking about. One stop, two stop, three stops, four stops. Since we've only got two stops, I can just go ahead and show the two and it will just block out anything that's in that location. I'm just gonna slightly increase that color saturation. The other part of this is when it does show the HDR in this image, you are not gonna be able to see it because you're viewing this in a 1920 by 1080 HD video. So you're probably not really gonna see much as of what is going on. I'll come down here, I'll open up the SDR options and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little box that says visualize in HDR. And so what it's doing right here is it's showing me the area that's right here that's going to be in HDR when I turn this off. So when I turn this off, this is the HDR area of our image. And if we had more, it would show more. If we had less, it would show less. If I just wanna view it in a standard SDR, I can go ahead and show you, this is what it would look like on a standard display. And this is what it would look like on an HDR display. So you also get some export functions. So you can export this in some HDR formats. If you were to take this and send it over to Photoshop, it would be a 32-bit image. You can see right down here now, it's in a 32-bit image. It's not in 16-bit. There's not a lot, whole lot of adjustments that you can do. So for a traditional HDR image, you would actually bracket your image. So you would take one even exposure like this, and then you would take one which is dark and that is for your highlights and this 
is overexposed and that would be for your shadows and you could combine those and you would get this expanded tonal range and that would be your high dynamic range. Yes, you can export it and see it out on someone else's HDR monitor, but that's the extent of it. Uh, you don't have HDR on the web and you don't have HDR in print, so it really serves no benefit other than that. So that is HDR. We're gonna go ahead and turn the HDR off because I don't want that. And let's go ahead and take a look at the next thing, which is called point color. And we'll go ahead and switch our images because it will make more sense over here. And we're gonna go down to our color mixer. And right here, notice that on the color mixer, we have the mixer. You'll notice that we have the mixer and now we have something called point color. We're gonna click on that point color. And what we're gonna do is then take the little eyedropper that we see right here and click and come over here and we're gonna pick this color. That is now going to let us isolate and use just that color. Anything that has this pink in the image, we're gonna be able to change it. So I have the ability to change the hue of that color, saturation of that color, the luminance, which is the brightness of that color. And I can control the range and just think of it as tolerance. So how far do you want it to extend in the pinks? So do I wanna make more areas selected or less areas selected in the pink that was selected? So that was the color that was selected. How far one way or another do we want that range to affect? This is just almost exactly like the old fuzziness in Photoshop, you would pick a color, slide that fuzziness slider. It's really just a, like a tolerance slider that you're picking the image. Um, you can do this in multiple colors. So if I wanted to do it in her eye color, I could just simply come over here, grab the eyedropper, go into that eye, click that, and now you'll see it has a second color, and then I can control just that blue in that color. Now, if you have this blue in other parts of the image, it is going to affect them. So if you really want to isolate it, doing this in Photoshop might be a better idea. Yes, you can do it there and you're gonna have more control over it. So that is the color mixer. And now to the last one, which is probably gonna be everybody's favorite. So we'll go ahead and click on this image and we're gonna come down here. You can see it says early access lens blur and let's make sure everything is open up. Yep, it looks like we're pretty good. I'm gonna come over here and click apply so it can start working its magic. It does take a little bit because it uses AI. So if you have a slow internet connection, it might take a little bit longer because it does have to go to offsite computers and then back to you again here. So if you've ever used depth blur in the neural engine in Photoshop, this is essentially the same thing, except for it's a little bit more intuitive and it has some other effects that the, that neural engine blur does not have. Obviously, Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom are the same program, so everything that you see here is also available inside of Lightroom. I probably wouldn't use this in the beginning of Adobe Camera Raw, I tend to go ahead and tone my images. If I was to use this, I would probably then go duplicate my main layer and my Photoshop created as a smart object and then use this as a Camera Raw filter because then I have a little bit more control over it. But let's see how this new lens blur works. And just like any new object that's in its beta, you have the option down here to submit feedback. So you can click there. If you don't like something or you like something or you want something different, feel free. You can send that to Adobe and they will accept that feedback. When we click this apply button, it, it automatically creates something called a depth mask. And what that means is if we're focused here on our subject and we can control where it selects. So right over here, we have subject. And here we have this little point. So I can click anywhere on here. So I can click this 
If I wanted this to be the object of where the depth blur started, I could click on that and it would change the way it did this. Notice she's out of focus now. But yeah, we don't want that. We want our subject. So we're going to just go ahead and click that. I could also click that point on a specific area of her and that's where it would start that depth blur as well. Depth blur is exactly what it sounds like. So right here, it's gonna blur less than it does back here. The amount of the blur is going to get greater as you go back away from your subject. That creates more realistic images versus just doing a plain flat blur that is the same the whole way back. We can see where that blur is right down here. So if you look at this, we've got this little thing in brackets. This is the area that the computer is saying is in focus. The areas outside of that are the areas they're starting to get blurred. You can control this by grabbing those little points and sliding them in any direction that you want. So in this case, I'm making it smaller. If I wanted it larger, I could go this way. So I can control the area that's in focus by adjusting this box. I can also move, just move this box if I want. So anything that I would wanna do, I can control right here. We also have different colors here, and you will see here in a second where these different colors come in, cause if I come in here to visualize the depth, and I can also open this up to refine it, you can see the different areas. So this purple area is this area back here. The light yellow in this is the subject right here. Now, what's cool about this is just because the computer picks an area that either wants in focus or out of focus, you can control it. Let's say we only wanted the blur to go this direction, all right? We can control that by saying, hey, we want this in focus. So this is just your normal brush size that we have here. And I can say, hey, all this area right here I want to keep in focus, all right? So I can control that. Anything that I want to blur, I can simply come in here, control that mask, and then I can paint, and it will automatically blur that image. So if I wanted it to blur all this area as well, and that is pretty harsh, so we're gonna increase that feather right there. It's way too harsh, so we'll just come in here and just blur this area just for the fun of it. like that. Then we turn off visualize the depth mask. You'll notice that this area has been blurred as well. So we can control that at any point and with anything that we want. The last thing I need to bring up a different image. So give me one second so we can do that. I used this in the other video and I wasn't going to use it. But now that I think about it, I'm like, hmm, I'm going to have to use this. So let's go ahead and warm it up. We're going to go down here to that lens blur. We're gonna hit apply, we'll let it blur, and then I'm gonna blur the daylights out of the background by sliding the blur amount all the way to the right. So now we've applied as much blur as we can. And right down here, we've got bokeh. So we can control the bokeh in the back of this image. So our default bokeh is this one, it's just your traditional circle lens. We can click on that. We can boost that, so if we want more, just take it all the way to the right. If I wanna change the type, I can come over here. So we've got our bubble, and you can see it changed all that to the bubble version. If we wanna do an old school lens and turn it into a pentagon, we can click the pentagon, and it changes it into a pentagon. We've got a donut, what is kind of looks like a ring light or a little donut or a circle. And then we've got cat's eye, so we can change that bokeh to cat's eye. And so this is allowing us to change the bokeh back here in the background use different versions and different amounts in the image. So that is everything that's available inside of the new Adobe Camera Raw 16. If you found this video helpful and could give us a thumbs up, that would actually be wonderful. If you have any comments or questions, you can always leave those below. And don't forget to subscribe.